All right, folks. In some exciting potential alien life in our own solar system news, we go over to Enceladus, the moon at Saturn, which has over time proven to be one of the more interesting places in our solar system. And some recent research of going over data from the Cassini mission, which uh, had ended its time after it you know, ran out of power, essentially, and the mission it had completed and done so much more than it was originally expected to do at Saturn um, in order to maintain the pristine um, environment that Saturn has and places like Enceladus where there could be life, they decided to put Cassini into the atmosphere in Saturn and burn it up so that there was no contamination of a place that could harbor life. The surface of Saturn, which is a gas giant, uh, would not be great for life as we know it. So that is the place you would send a spacecraft. Um, and that data that it sent back was hugely important. And the Cassini spacecraft, there's been so many great things. The, the footage from Cassini is really wild uh, because we got to see so many different aspects of the various moons at Saturn and the planet itself and really see what that environment is like. And this latest research published on June 14th of 2023, this was going over the detection of phosphates origin originating from Enceladus's ocean. Now, uh, this paper has had 14,000 accesses, and I'm going to read the abstract here so we can get an idea of the science and what they actually saw. I'm sure you saw plenty of headlines um, that may be stretching the truths in many different ways, but before I dive into this, the general idea here is that We've learned more and more through our solar system and, and through different things at the edge of our solar system, like Pluto and other places, uh, including Enceladus, where we just thought these were really bare surfaces, uh, just like our moon, where we see comet impacts, asteroid impacts, kind of peppering the whole surface. When we started to look closer, especially at places like Enceladus with Cassini and Pluto, we see these areas where things are smooth and almost looks like there's a flow of things. And that indicates potentially moving plates. And depending on the material that is actually frozen in Enceladus's case and in Pluto's case, these are ice, you know, uh, and on Enceladus, we're seeing that there is actually ejection of what looks to be water. So underground oceans, subsurface oceans, where there could be things that are, you know, that's where we would expect life it, it, to, to, in order to protect itself from the environment of space without something that has the atmosphere like Earth to kind of give you a Goldilocks zone opportunity for life as we know it to exist. There appear to be these other oceans and these surfaces that become smooth and don't that are not peppered with comet and asteroid impacts these are places with seismic activity which means the core is still active it's still warm underneath there so they ended up going back through the data and found in these plumes that's developing one of the rings of saturn uh from the ejecta from enceladus contained phosphorus and phosphates so this is a building block for life as we know it. So it has become the place to look in our solar system for life. So let's go into the abstract. Saturn's moon Enceladus harbors a global ice-covered water ocean. The Cassini spacecraft investigated the composition of the ocean by analysis of material ejected into space by the moon's cryovolcanic plume. The analysis of salt-rich ice grains by Cassini's cosmic dust analyzer enabled inference of major solutes in the ocean water, Na+, K+, uh, Cl-, HCO3-, and CO3-2 negative, and its alkaline pH. Phosphorus, the least abundant of the bioessential elements, has not yet been detected in an ocean beyond Earth. Earlier, geochemical modeling suggests that phosphate might be scarce in the ocean of Enceladus and other icy worlds. However, 
More recent modeling of mineral solubilities in Enceladus's ocean indicates that phosphate could be relatively abundant. Here, we present Cassini's cosmic dust analyzer mass spectra, spectra of ice grains emitted by Enceladus that show the presence of sodium phosphates. Our observational results, together with laboratory analog in experiments, suggest the fo that phosphorus is readily available in Enceladus's ocean in the form of orthophosphates, with phosphorus concentrations at least a hundredfold higher in the moon's plume-forming ocean waters than in Earth's ocean. Furthermore, geochemical experiments and modeling demonstrate that such high phosphate abundances could be achieved in Enceladus and possibly in other ocean, icy ocean worlds beyond the primordial CO2 snow line, either at the cold sea floor or in hydrothermal environments with moderate temperatures. In both cases, the main driver is probably the higher solubility of calcium phosphate minerals compared with calcium carbonate in moderately alkaline solutions rich in carbonate or bicarbonate ions. So, they, are, if, if we take that and crunch it down one more level, they went back to the data, found evidence of these phosphates in the plumes, and from their experiments and analog experiments testing the same type of thing, they believe that there's at least 100 times more uh, phosphorus in the waters of uh, Enceladus than there are in, in Earth's oceans. So uh, I don't know how much phosphorus would be lethal to life, right? I don't know if 100 times fold, if it's a very, you know, they said themselves that it is a, um, that phosphorus is the least abundant of the bioessential elements. So I don't know if a hundredfold, you know, a hundredfold of zero is still zero, right? So I don't know how much at play right now uh, that much phosphorus means for life, but it is something we didn't expect in icy worlds uh, before. We had only thought that Earth could have phosphorus in the oceans. Here we are in Enceladus where they have it. So another great example of where gathering good data and presenting it, and, and this paper will go through the ringer and, and people will have their arguments. I, I saw someone in the scientific field arguing that there's too much phosphorus for life to actually be there. Um, these are things that will be worked out as other people try and take the same data and uh, try and figure out if another hypothesis holds or if this one does. So exciting times. It is a groundbreaker. And it also means that there's a good chance that a mission uh, there's been a few that's already been uh, discussed that might get funding for this type of mission to Saturn to send a digger, some kind of minor robot to the ocean so that it can go in and investigate for more signs of life and get us even better uh, data than Cassini gave us. But um, wild times and uh, an amazing conclusion here by this, by this research group um, detecting the signs of life in Enceladus's ocean. So, an exciting one, and we're looking forward to more and potentially the mission that will be sent there to investigate. All right, folks, we've made it to the end here. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Today in Space. Don't forget to look out for our first real piece of 3D printed merch, the Starship Rocket Pen with Hexatube that we will be showcasing very, very soon. Launching soon. We're hoping to get that out by the end of the month. So check out ag3dprinting.etsy.com. We'll have that up there soon. And thanks, everyone, for your support. Um, and if you want to check what we're doing, obviously follow us online, Today in Space Pod, on Instagram and Twitter, Today in Space, on TikTok, Today in Space Podcast page on Facebook. And you can always email us at todayinspacepodcast at gmail.com. I'm your host, Alex Girofanos. Spread love and spread science. Be good. We'll see you in the next one.